if you really want a definitive uh, explanation of how this all works, this is a great book. It comes at the problem from autism direction, and he makes different links that aren't related to us. But he gets into these pathways and, and the mercury pathways, and I think that pertains to us. I think we have a voice in that conversation. The second bullet, MTHFR polymorphins affect between 10 and 50% of the population. There are two gene loci for MTHFR. There's two alleles at each loci, so there's four alleles that can be in any combination, which means you can be homozygous with one way, or you can be heterozygous in any combination. And however those line up, thank you mom and dad, will depend on what your abilities are to produce methyl groups to, meth to keep the methylation and transsulfuration pathways working. Which means if I'm 10% impaired, if I'm 70% impaired, if I'm 40% impaired based on the genetic uh, DNAs. By the way, this all came out of the Human Genome Project, completed in 2003. That's why we're now talking about this, but it's just beginning. It's gonna, we can do, a, a, now it's a swish spit, or it used to be a buckle swab, and we could learn everything about you DNA-wise. Uh, we didn't know what it meant, but, and that's the problem right now, is we can generate reams of reports on your, on your genome and all your propensities, but we have no idea what the clinical ramifications of that are. But that's the next challenge called genetic medicine. The next challenge of the next decade or two is writing computer algorithms that digest and interpret all of that data that tells us specifically what enzymes to use, what drugs to use, what therapies to use, because we now know where all the metabolic pathway blockages are, et cetera, et cetera. So 10 to 50% of the population has some form of an impairment. Again, clinically, think through what that might mean. All these are related to it, uh, MTHFR. Again, the list is long, but you know, I, my eyes picked up on that heavy metal uh, retention and detoxification along with everything else. By eating natural and taking active forms. By eating and, uh, natural and taking active forms of the B vitamins, humans are able to bypass the metabolic pathway blockages and compensate for genetic environmental problems. That's the key, but you gotta know where the blockages are first. Once I know where they're at, I can dial in specific things with regards to specific nutrients. It's not just taking a big handful and hoping there's something in there that, that fits me, okay? But there's something specific that I need that I can really dial into, and that's where the genetic medicine's taking us. So what's the clinical application of this? This is my interpretation, this is what I do. Um, Every once in a while, a sick, in quotes, patient will show up in my office with very complicated health histories, many doctors, drugs, alternative medicines. This is a picture, this is a pattern, this is just a presentation. They have infections, they have problems with wound healings, they have diabetes, they have cardiovascular disease. They're very sensitive. They tell me they want their mercury out or they tell me they can't have plastic. Or, and, on, and, and what have we done in the past? We've looked at these people and said, you are nuts. You're crazy, you're a hypochondriac, right? You need to see a psychiatrist. I don't do that, I, I never did, but it's like I don't think that way anymore. I look at that and, and I just say, you know what, you need a physician that understands methyl tetrahydrofolate, you need a physician that understands these genetic pathways, these metabolic pathways, because you've got some, uh, some great issues here. We need to be thinking about supplementing, detoxifying, eliminating toxic materials. We don't want to uh, additionally burden the body we're going to avoid lead, mercury, fish fillings, use non marisol vaccines. Um, I don't discount their ailments. If they tell me that that's the way it is, that's the way it is. And if we go back to that list of issues with MTHFR, the biggie that we all recognize, all meaning medicine, is neurological stuff. That's what neural tube defects are all about um, with, with folic acid, is because I didn't neurologically develop. It also has great psychological things, and just as an aside, what will happen is you tell, I tell my patients, when you go to the doctor and he looks at this, he's going to tell you you're depressed. Because you are. Biochemically, you're depressed by definition. And fortunately, the FDA has approved therapies for people who are depressed. It is now FDA-approved therapy for MTHFR to treat them for depression and a whole bunch of other things. So I refer them to a physician. This is the medical protocol that they have. It's physician supervised. The L-methylfolate is a food product, but it's controlled by prescription. So it has to be prescribed and managed by a physician. They'll probably wind up on B12 uh, shots because in that cycle, B12 was the vitamin 
that, uh, that worked with uh, methionine synthetase to convert homocysteine to methionine. And all that has to be in order on all those pathways in order for me to get these pathways working and to get worked around it. And if that's a physician's uh, thing. Um, as an alternative to L-methylfolate or the folinic or folic acid, uh, that you might also hear the terms DMG or TMG, uh, which is just another alternative form of a methyl donor that can be, pres that can be prescribed and used to provide the methylation cycle uh, what it needs to go forward. While we're on nutrition, I want you to think periodontally. I'm slightly shifting now, but we're going to end here in nutrition uh, the, the part of it. Uh, paranthocyanidins bind to lip lipopolysaccharides. Remember we talked about that a minute ago. Um, they inhibit bacterial adhesion. They inhibit collagenase and serine proteinase to secreted bacteria in white blood cells, deactivates oxygen-free radicals through the process of, of reduction. Coenzyme Q10 related with ATP. We just talked about folate. Um, lowers homocysteine. Uh, B12, it's a cofactor in getting homocysteine to work. Uh, vitamin C hydroxylates proline to cross-link collagen. This was the big problem in scurvy. You run out of this water-soluble vitamin and you can no longer cross-link the, uh, the collagen fibers. The proline amino acid can't cross-link and so it becomes weak and so you basically just fall apart. Your connective tissue falls apart which leads to the bleeding and the tooth loss if you had absolute deficiency. Fortunately we get enough a little bit that we don't have big time scurvy but perhaps maybe in a micro sense we could have micro scurvy going on because we're not repairing our tissues because we don't have adequate vitamin C. Alpha lipoic acid suppresses uh, prostaglandin E2 modifying gene expression and stabilizing nuclear factor kappa beta transcription factor. You see in that the pathways we talked about these vitamins all have important roles to play in modifying and moderating all those metabolic pathways and how they work. So the question is, again, I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but when you think through this nutrition, the oxidation, the MTHFR, think about what are the possible medical referrals that, could, that you could set up with this because you have this knowledge and you can now interact and counsel with your patients in this regard. All of a sudden there's nutritionists, there's health food stores, alternative medicine practitioners, naturopaths, diabetic educators, wellness enthusiasts. I mean, all of a sudden, if you know this stuff and it has real clinical relevance, you can do things from a marketing point of view as well as a, a patient treatment point of view.